Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us in this webinar uh, about the Rancher Advantage. We're going to learn a lot about SUSE Rancher uh, today. My name is Adrian Kosmaczewski. I am developer relations at Vision, the DevOps company. And I talk to you from the beautiful city of Zurich. It's a beautiful summer day today. Finally, the rain is gone. Uh, a, little, a few words about Vision, the company, the company where I'm working, where we are organizing this webinar for you. First of all, the name, just like Vision, just like, you know, that's why you have an eye on the logo. And uh, of course, we call ourselves the DevOps company. We are in Zurich next to the train station since 2014. We are 14 visioneers, as we call ourselves, and we are the leading partner in Switzerland for all things cloud, Kubernetes, and DevOps. Uh, we offer 24 seven support for our customers. We are certified in various different ways, which is very useful for some branches of the industry, of course. And we've been uh, named the first official Swiss Kubernetes service, pro certified service provider back in 2016. So clearly we are very, very deep into Kubernetes. And of course we are partners with plenty, plenty, plenty of companies in the market. Some of those logos, I'm pretty sure you recognize from the screen, but today we're going to talk about Rancher extensively. We also have our own products, uh, very shortly mentioning Apuyo. It's a platform as a service uh, here in Switzerland uh, uh, that we provide uh, together with a company called Puzzle in Bern. And we offer two very big, very interesting open source projects uh, re regarding the Kubernetes world called Project Sin and KTOP. So please check them out on, the, on our website on vision.ch. But of course, enough of vision, you're not here to listen about what we do and who we are. Uh, basically, what we want to know today is what is Susan Rancher? We're going to go into detail. We're going to show many of the features. We're going to even learn how to install it just very quickly. Uh, and I'm going to actually install one instance of Rancher live on the demo. I'm going to show how to perform multi-cluster management with it, uh, how to configure user authentication and security. And of course, once you get it installed, what do you do with that uh, with Rancher? So I'm going to show you a few things that Rancher uh, is very useful for uh, once you have your cluster up and running and your developers are pushing their applications uh, through their CI CD pipelines into those clusters. All of this will come together with a demo, a live demo. So I'm going to actually show Rancher live. I'm going to install it. I'm going to uh, deploy applications with it. I'm going to configure the security. So every single thing that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to demo. And I hope the demo gods will be with me today and everything will work as uh, expected. Of course, question and answers. Uh, I don't know if you see on your Zoom window, you should see a Q&A box at the bottom, so I'm going to just check. Uh, there we go. So there's a Q&A box, yes, absolutely. Uh, and you can use that Q&A box on Zoom to write your questions. And at the end of the session, I'm going to go through those questions uh, and going to provide an answer. So please feel free to leave your uh, questions. And of course, on the chat, your comments, if you have any. So. Just to be very clear, this is going to be a somewhat technical presentation. So we expect uh, people watching this webinar to know what containers are, what Kubernetes is, and how infrastructure as code works. Just to have the basic uh, ideas in your head will be very, very helpful. Otherwise, if you do not have those notions, you can always check our video uh, that we have published in our vision.tv channel. You can go vision.tv and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have a video called Docker and Kubernetes, which basically will provide all of the basic knowledge you need to understand what I'm going to be talking about in this webinar, okay? So if you are watching this afterwards, not live, uh, please feel free to check out that video because it will bring all the knowledge you need to understand this one. However, as you can understand, launching Rancher is not something that is done very, very easily. There's a little bit of infrastructure to do. So what I'm gonna do is to warm up the demo and leave it running uh, so that when we come back to the demo section at the end of this webinar, we can actually get things done, right? So I'm going to just change here to my terminal 
And here in my terminal, I have a script that I'm showing on the screen that basically uh, helps me to launch Rancher. And I'm launching Rancher inside of my laptop. I have my laptop, my ThinkPad Lenovo here uh, next to me. And what I'm going to do is to use K3D. K3D is another great product from SUSE. Uh, it's a small, very small Kubernetes distribution you can run on your laptop or in a Raspberry Pi or whatever you want. It's used all over the place in cars and even airplanes, if you believe the US Air Force. So uh, I'm going to create a small cluster with just uh, one control plane node and three worker nodes. I'm going to save the kubeconfig configuration so that I can talk to this cluster on my machine on a file called k 3 kubeconfig that I will then reference all over the place so that I can install Rancher. Installing Rancher requires to install first the certified uh, the cert manager and then, and then Rancher. And I'm going to use Helm for that. Helm, it's basically the package manager for Kubernetes. After that, because Rancher will be running on my machine, I'm going to expose it to the outer world through a reverse proxy called ng-rock. Maybe some of you, if you are developers, you maybe know ng-rock. It's a very handy way of sharing whatever app you're working in on your own machine to the outer world. And you can send the URL to your coworkers and everybody can check it out, even if it's running on your machine. So basically that's what I'm going to do. Of course, I'm not showing the host name. I don't want anyone picking up my Rancher installation before for me, right? So I'm keeping that a secret. It's a variable that you cannot see. Okay, just in case. Uh, I will start Rancher. In a second tab on my terminal, I will start Minikube. It's a very simple Minikube uh, cluster. Minikube is very similar to K3D. It's a bit bigger. It has a bit more services, but it's also a very good alternative if you uh, want to run Kubernetes locally on your own uh, machine. And I'm going to start one with five nodes, one control plane and four worker nodes. Very simple, hit enter, there it goes. I'm going to do the same with Exascale. I don't know if you know Exascale, it's, a, uh, it's an infrastructure as a service provider here in Switzerland. Uh, they have data centers uh, in Geneva, in Bulgaria, in Germany as well. It's a Swiss company. We work a lot with them. And we use Terraform to create Kubernetes clusters on Exascale. So exactly what I'm doing here is Terraform apply. So this script, basically, the only thing it does is to start the installation of a Kubernetes cluster in Exascale. That's everything it does. And on this tab right here, I have a small uh, LDAP server. So LDAP, it's a standard for authentication. And I'm going to show you how you can configure your Rancher installation to, instead of using the default authentication options provided by Rancher, to use Open LDAP. So basically, what I need is to have, once again, an Open LDAP server running on my machine, uh, which is basically this project that I found on GitHub, very useful. You can expose it using NG Rock. Once again, I need it to be available to the outer world so that it works uh, properly with all of the things that I'm going to show today. And this is how I launch it. And it's done. Very well. So we can see that K3S and Rancher are starting as we speak. So that means that we can continue our presentation right now. Very good. Let us start with the obvious question. What is Rancher? May, probably many of you know what it is, but I really want to go from the very beginning just to show you exactly what it is and what's the context in which it is useful. Uh, so Rancher is an open source project, an open source web management tool, free as in freedom and free as in beer because it is open source and you can download it and you can use it and you can check the source code as much as you want and you can install it for free on your own laptop, on premises in many, many different ways. Rancher is also the name of the company that created Rancher, the management system. And this company has been bought by, this company started in 2014 when 
Kubernetes was released more or less at the same time. It's used all over the place. It's incredibly popular. So that's why I'm pretty sure you know what Rancher is, but still, maybe there's people watching this video afterwards who don't know. And of course, Rancher has been a part of the SUSE family. SUSE is a big, big player, one of the first Linux distributions back in the 90s, extremely well-known company. Now they basically uh, own Rancher and they are deploying it and developing it and supporting it as part of their own suite of products, which is fantastic for all companies and, 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 and businesses all over the planet. Rancher provides a whole suite of services that makes working with Kubernetes much simpler. So you install Rancher, you get this application running uh, on your infrastructure, and it helps you manage your Kubernetes infrastructure. Because uh, working with Kubernetes can be pretty complicated, uh, and Rancher provides an extremely easy to use user interface, not only to one cluster, but to any cluster. Actually, Rancher supports any Kubernetes cluster that has been certified by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. This is very important. And this is why today we're going to see that Rancher works seamlessly with Exascale, with Amazon, with uh, Minikube, K3S and whatnot. So clearly it is compatible and it works brilliantly well and it brings plenty of services thanks to Rancher. We're going to see all of that as well. One of the great advantages as well of Rancher is that since version 2.5, it has complete integration with Amazon EKS, the Elastic Kubernetes Service. EKS is extremely popular these days. It's a very cost-effective way to get a cluster running up and, up and running very quickly. Rancher has absolute full integration with it, so it's great. And actually, we're going to show it in this demo as well today. So why would you use Rancher? Well, there's plenty of ways, plenty of reasons why uh, companies are using Rancher for uh, their management of Kubernetes. First of all, you can manage as many clusters as you have. These days, because of the digital transformation, many companies have different clusters. Maybe you have a cluster for development, staging, and production. That's the classic ones. But maybe different teams inside of those development teams have their own clusters for testing the internal parts of their own systems. Because these days, lots of companies are doing microservices. So you might want to test them individually. So you can use, for example, K3S to test them on your laptops. Or maybe you have something else running running somewhere else. How do you manage that? How do you manage the security? How do you manage the updates of all of those clusters? Well, Rancher provides a unified interface for that. I mentioned security, and this is a very important point. Who has access to all of that information inside of your clusters? Rancher provides built-in security, authentication, users, roles, groups, everything that you need to be sure that only the people and the team members that you need to, who should be accessing those clusters are able to do that. There's also the global application catalog. You can see uh, in a snapshot, you can see all of the applications installed and running on all of your clusters. This is very important because you'll be running a lot of things on Kubernetes. Kubernetes grows very quickly. When companies start using Kubernetes, all of a sudden, plenty of people are installing plenty of applications there. As I mentioned, for EKS, full application lifecycle management. This is fantastic because EKS is becoming very popular. We've got integrated monitoring. You don't need to install Prometheus or Grafana separately. Actually, I'm going to show it to you. One click and you've got it. And of course, you can do GitOps at scale. That means that once you push code to your Git repository, your uh, application can be up and running on no time. So let us see a little bit, how do you install it? Actually, it's very simple. Most of the teams that we know, actually most of what we do as well in Vision with Rancher is installing it either with Docker, either on a Kubernetes cluster. If you use Kubernetes, of course, you're going to use Helm. It's the simplest way. And it's the one I'm using right now as I speak. It is what's going on in my laptop. That's why it's a bit uh, spinning up the, the ventilator right now. But you can install it as well on all of the big cluster providers, uh, all of the big uh, Kubernetes providers and cloud providers uh, out there, AWS, Azure, Google, DigitalOcean, whatever you want. 
And you can even install it on Linux using Rancher D. So you can actually install it manually if you need. Um, this is experimental for the moment, at least that's what the documentation says, but still very interesting for some of you. If you want to use Docker, it couldn't be simple. Docker run Rancher slash Rancher. There we go. A few seconds later, you're gonna have your Rancher installation listening for you on port 443. Very simple. If you want to use Kubernetes, of course, very simple as well. Helm install, what else? That's exactly what you need. Of course, you have to pass, remember that you have to pass the host name of the Rancher uh, instance that you're going to be installing. So that's the only thing to pay attention to. And then of course, remember that the major only, um, excuse me, the only requirement that Rancher has when you install it using Helm is that it has to have cert manager, jet stack slash cert manager, because it generates certificates and it needs that to be installed previously. So remember that if you do an installation using Helm. Once you get it up and running, you can start adding clusters to Rancher. And this slide basically shows exactly what it is. You have an interface, well, you have the full list of all of the clusters that you have installed and you see the status of those clusters. And for example, you can see in this uh, screenshot that the EKS cluster that I launched, this screenshot is from this morning, uh, it's provisioning. So I just started, it's actually that can take up to 30 minutes. So what I'm, what we're going to do today is basically launch the installation, but we're not probably not going to see it finished by the end. There's also one thing that I want to point out. If you look at the exascale and mini cube um, entries on this screen, you're going to see a small warning red icon. And basically, if you click on one of those, you're going to see that controller manager and scheduler appear as red. Now, this is not a Rancher problem. Turns out that in Kubernetes versions uh, 1.19, two services have been deprecated, which are the controller manager and the Kubernetes scheduler. So Rancher keeping backwards compatibility with previous versions of Kubernetes will try to use those services. Uh, and right now, as we speak in the latest version of Rancher, we still have those red icons appearing. Now, if you install if you install Rancher on your, uh, and for, on your infrastructure and you manage clusters whose version of Kubernetes is later than 119, you are going to see that icon anyway. So don't worry. If you see those, those red things, it's okay. And actually you can see the version of Kubernetes right there. I don't know if you see my, my mouse in the middle of the screen above the 1% gauge, you can see Kubernetes version 120. Now, if I look at the slide, the following slide is the EKS cluster I created this morning, which is on version 1.18. So as you can see, the 1.18 appears all in green. So the good news is that this problem has actually been, and yes, this slide shows exactly the problem. Basically, if you, for example, if I talk to my Minikube that has a version 1.20, uh, basically, when I want to get the component status, I get this error. So this is why Rancher is showing red on the screen. Should be all green. The good news is that Rancher has committed eight days ago, because this is open source, we can go to GitHub and see what's going on. There was an issue about this that was closed eight days ago, precisely, uh, at the beginning of June. So that means that in the previous, in the next versions of Rancher, this problem will be solved. So don't worry, if you have a cluster that's older than 1.19, you are going to see those two red uh, icons, nothing to worry about a priori, a priori. And of course, these clusters are all new. I just launched them. So there's nothing that could be wrong with them anyway. Very good. Let's go to a very, very sensitive subject. Um, it turns out, it turns out that Kubernetes by default, the Kubernetes project, the one, if you go and you fetch it from Google, you go to Google and say, give me Kubernetes. They give you Kubernetes. Kubernetes has absolutely no notion of users, roles, groups, or anything. So this was a problem at the very beginning. People were like screaming, saying, how could it be that a system like this? Actually, Kubernetes does one thing and one thing very well, which is container management. And it has left to the ecosystem to come up with solutions. And boy, 
Rancher brought one of the best solutions all around regarding this problem. Because with Rancher, you can integrate the security to your existing security, uh, supported by various mechanisms. So first of all, if you don't have any uh, any problem and you don't have any previous uh, user management strategy, you can use the one provided by Rancher. Rancher by default launches with a local authentication scheme ready to use. If you are a, win a company that's heavy on Windows, you most probably have all of your users on Active Directory. These days could be on Azure, could be Federation Services and so on. Doesn't matter. Rancher supports them all. Just provide the proper uh, configuration keys and you're good to go. If you are on LDAP, but an open version of LDAP, uh, you can basically configure your uh, Rancher instance very simply. And this is what I'm, what I'm going to be doing today afterwards in the demo. You can use OAuth. If you're running an open source project and you want GitHub uh, users to be able to log in, you can basically have them uh, use their GitHub uh, account. And if you have many other options like Keycloak, that's becoming very popular these days, you can also use Keycloak with your Rancher installation. No problem at all. Now comes the problem. Basically, well, it's not a problem, it's a great thing. You have a cluster up and running, everything is smooth. And if you're running less than 1.19, everything will be green, at least until the latest version of Rancher, right? But what do we do with uh, our cluster? So DevOps teams are going to be doing two different things. On one side, the dev part of the DevOps engineers are going to be starting applications. They're going to be installing it. Of course, Rancher doesn't change anything to the way developers can interact with uh, Kubernetes. They can still use kubectl. Everything works as usual. Uh, however, some users might prefer to use visual helps to get their applications up and running. And there's a whole catalog of applications ready to be installed with literally two clicks. One click to choose the app, another click to click the create button. You wait a few seconds, the application is running. This is great. It's based on Helm. Of course, it's based on open standards uh, like Helm. So we can get plenty of different applications. Like for example, if you're into serverless, you have Trigger Mesh or OpenFast. If you want the database, you have MariaDB, MySQL, Mongo, etcd. Et uh, if you're into Git Tops, you can have Argo CD. There's plenty, plenty, plenty to choose. The ops side of the equation will, of course, want to know what's going on on the cluster. So on day two operations, the teams of operation teams are going to be installing monitoring tools on the cluster just to know exactly where it goes. Well, it turns out that it, with a couple of clicks, you can have Prometheus, Alert Manager, and Grafana up and running, ready to use, ready for you to configure and to see all of those beautiful dashboards that show all of the information about everything that's going on inside of your clusters. Very good. So that's for the talk, because now we're going to actually see uh, all of this in action. So what are we going to do today in this demo? First of all, we're going to take this new Rancher installation that I just launched, and we're going to configure it using OpenLDAP. Then I'm going to launch, I'm going to trigger the creation of a new cluster from this Rancher installation into Amazon EKS. I'm going to be using the Amazon account that was provided to me by Vision. Then we're going to attach the existing clusters into our Rancher instance because we have a mini cube and an exascale cluster, if you remember, right? So we're going to get that into Rancher as well. And finally, we are going to deploy an application on Exoscale using our Rancher instance, all using the, uh, just only, we, we have to use the command line, we have to use the terminal only once for each one of those clusters. We just have to enter the command to install the agents that will be running on the clusters. So stay with me. I'm going to sip a little bit of water and we'll get started. Very good. So I take control again of my keyboard. And here we have, uh, here we have now, I have a problem, that's what I see. Yes, exactly, that's exactly what I thought. This something hap sometimes happens, this is, um, There we go. Now, 
this is something that happens sometimes. It has nothing to do with Rancher. It has to do with my own configuration, but I was sure it was going to happen. So this is Rancher. My Rancher instance is running in Rancher demo EU ngrock.io. I'm going to just select a few default options. I'm going to generate a new random password and I agree to the terms and conditions, of course, and I will accept the default URL for Rancher. And here I am running Rancher. This instance is actually running on my machine right now and it's exposed to, well, you can actually check it out. Of course, you won't be able to log in unless you wrote down the password that just appeared on the screen. And that's because uh, I haven't yet configured security. So of course, the first thing I have to do as a good uh, DevOps engineer is of course to configure the security. So right on the start screen of my Rancher installation, I can directly go to security authentication and I can select here my open LDAP provider. As you can see, all of the options that I've shown on the slides are exactly there and ready to use. So I'm going to choose open LDAP. I'm going to scroll down and there's a few fields that I have to fill. So I'm going to open my cheat sheet because I have a cheat sheet and I can here select the hostname or IP address, which is basically the one running on my machine. Once again, it's ng-rock that it's exposing this to the outer world on port 2365, very good. I have to configure some parameters because this is LDAP. This is pure LDAP uh, standard stuff. I need the distinguished name. I need the service account password, which you don't know, and the user search base. And then I have to, to test and to enable authentication. I have to enter the username and the password of one of the accounts on that LDAP. Let's assume that I'm a professor. I am not, but I, and I type the password of my professor and I authenticate with OpenLDAP and lo and behold, here we are. We've changed now the authentication pattern of uh, Rancher instead of using the default version, the default mechanism, which is the integrated user uh, management system. We're going to be using LDAP. And as you can see, Rancher is able to pick from from the LDAP server information such as my name, my email, and plenty of other things that are ready to be used. Uh, speaking about which, I'm going to set up my cloud credentials. So this is very convenient. If you work a lot with AKS or external cloud providers, you might want to have your cloud credentials already stored into your uh, Rancher instance because this way you can reuse them and you don't have to enter them every time, right? So here I'm going to add a cloud credential and I'm going to call it Amazon EKS Credentials. Very good. It's a credential for Amazon, but as you can see, there's plenty of options. Of course, I'm on Amazon. Uh, we are in Europe, so I, I basically put all of my uh, clusters usually here in Frankfurt. So I'm going to select EU Central One. And here I need my uh, access key, which is public, so you can see it. However, the other one, which is the secret key, of course, is completely private. So I'm just going to copy it and you will never know which one it was. I don't need to save this password. Thank you so much. And now we have our cloud credentials. Of course, as I told you previously, um, Rancher has full, is, uh, full support of Amazon EKS. So this is fantastic. Let's get started with a new cluster on Amazon because I really would like to see that. So the first thing I do is to go to global uh, here on the global menu. I have my uh, cluster menu, okay? So I can see the cluster. The one cluster that appears is of course, the K3S cluster that I launched on my machine. The, that one is automatically added and managed. Uh, usually for, for uh, in many ways, you never use this cluster for anything else than Rancher, but you might as well have Rancher installed as one of the applications running inside your own cluster if you only have one. So it's perfectly valid option either way. Let's add a new cluster. And there's plenty of options to add a new cluster. You can register an existing Kubernetes cluster. You can create a new Kubernetes cluster. That's what we are interested in right now. And I'm going to use Amazon EKS, which as I said, uh, the, the hosted Kubernetes options are becoming more and more popular these days because of course uh, you pay Amazon or Microsoft or Google to take care of the management of those classes for you. So it's a great option for small teams that get started and want to get a new application in the market. So this is a great option. So let's do that. I'm going to select Amazon EKS. 
I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it EKS. It's not very original, but it works. I'm going to select EU Central One because that's where I like to have my clusters running. And then I can see that ah, my cloud credentials, of course, I have only one. So it pre-selected automatically the one that I need. I configure the cluster. Very good. Don't worry about the unauthorized operation. Uh, it appears, but it basically you don't have to worry. Everything is okay. I will select all the defaults for the configuration of the network. I will select the defaults as well for the, um, the configuration. The only thing that I have to do here is to provide, and this is marked right here, uh, the node group name. So basically to host a Kubernetes cluster, of course, you need a group of virtual machines running inside of the same data center that will hold the uh, control plane and the worker nodes of your Kubernetes cluster. So basically in this case, I'm just going to give it a name, EKS webinar demo. That's basically what I need to do. I'm going to hit create. And there we go, it is provisioning. So this is going to take a while. So I'm going to leave it running. With a bit of luck, it's going to be ready by the end of the presentation. So let's see, I, I, I have my, actually I have my EKS uh, tab here open. Uh, here I have as well my Exoscale console open. And as you can see, I have created this demo cluster on the uh, CH Geneva 2 data center. We're going to be using that in a minute as well. So here we have Rancher. This is the star of the night. Here is where we are right now. The next thing we want to do is to include, to attach the, the mini cube and the exascale clusters that we've created at the very beginning. So let's add cluster. It's very simple. Neither exascale nor mini cube are appearing on this menu, but fear not. I can select other cluster. I can select mini cube right here and I hit create. Nothing else, just use the defaults. And here what comes is a command line, a command that I have to type on the command line. And of course, you are not going to type this manually, character by character. There's a copy to clipboard, much simpler. So this is for Minikube. So I go to my terminal, I select Minikube. And in Minikube, I have uh, configured a command called K. So K, it's an alias that uses kubectl with the proper cube config so that I can do, for example, Q, K get nodes. This is a very common trick. Uh, if you work a lot on the command line, aliases are your friend. So here I'm talking to Minikube. My kubectl is actually talking to Minikube, which is great. I'm going to paste the command. And instead of typing kubectl apply, I'm going to do K apply and enter. Very good. We're going to do the same for exascale, but but I cannot use the same, the same command. This command is only per cluster, so that's okay. I'm going to add a new cluster, other cluster, and I'm going to select exos exoscale. And normally, there we go, ah, much better. So I have exoscale, exoscale is pending. I have to get into that and then I can get the registration command, which is what I need. As you can see, or maybe you you don't realize, but it's actually different to the previous one, but same mechanism. I just copy, go to the terminal. Here I have a, a K command, but which K? This command actually talks to exoscale. So if I do key get nodes, I'm actually seeing the nodes on my exoscale console. So I can see that, for example, ACRUT is one of the nodes. So if I look at the instances, ACRUT, there you go. The other one is SZXBS, SZXBS, and so on. So I'm really talking to, uh, to exoscale here, which is great. I'm going to paste my command and K apply, and boom, gone. So now I have my rancher. I can go and see all of the clusters that I have. Two of them are ready. And as you see, the mini cube one shows the error that I showed at the very beginning. Uh, why? Because it's using 1.20. That's okay. Uh, then I will, if I select any of those clusters, I can see in real time exactly what's going on inside of my cluster. And this is fantastic. It's phenomenal. We have a centralized way to know and to learn everything that's going on on my uh, cluster at any given time. That's really cool. So I'm going to go here uh, to uh, global. As you can see, my EKS cluster, it's still provisioning. If I go to my Amazon console and I refresh, 
with a bit of luck, yes, we are lucky. Here is the AKS cluster that I triggered from my rancher that it's basically under construction. So it takes a while. Uh, in some cases, it's taking me up to 40 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes. It depends on the load, I guess, on the whole data center in Frankfurt, but it's great because it's on progress. So this is fantastic. We can leave it working for the moment. And I have a little bit more water because I'm talking a lot, of course. So now, of course, uh, this, this professor that is the owner, now the administrator of all of this rancher installation would like to give access to other users uh, to be able to perform operations on the cluster, okay? So for example, I'm going to open let us log out. I will log out from this user. So here I am. I'm going to use another user from my LDAP, my fake LDAP account. So if you, if I log as a different user, in this case, I'm logging in as Philip J. Fry. Uh, and you can log yourself with F-R-Y, F-R-Y, username and password. You can try it if you are watching this uh, from your laptop. You can open it. This is live. And here, as you can see, no clusters. Nothing is visible. Why is that? Because the professor can control who views which clusters and what they can do on those clusters. So it's not very convenient. Let's go back. Uh, let's be again. Let's log in again as our professor. I log in again and I can see all my clusters. This is great. And I will select the exoscale because I want to work with one of my colleagues, uh, which is Philip Fry. I want him to access this uh, cluster. So I will select members on the cluster overview page and I will add a member. And this is very simple. I can use Fry. I select Fry. I will make him a member, not an owner. And now if I log out and log back again, you know what's going to happen. Log out, and Fry, Fry, log in again. Don't ask me again for this site. Thank you so much. And here we have Philip J. Fry doesn't see anything else but what he needs to see, which is exoscale. Now, Philip J. Fry has a passion for blogging and he really, really likes blogging a lot. So basically the first thing he's going to be uh, looking for, for blog engines that could be running on this Kubernetes instance. So first of all, let's get into, we can see uh, all of these things. It is great. I'm going to create a project as Philip J. Fry. I'm going to create a project on my rancher and I'm going to call it WordPress because I'm a big fan of WordPress and I hope that WordPress is available on my cluster. And basically I can select now my cluster project, which is WordPress. I'm inside of that project right now. You can see them right here. Here you have in this menu, you have your clusters and here you have your projects. And inside of a project, you can launch apps. So let's create a, let's, get apps, uh, there are no apps launched. So let's install a new one. Let's create one of these. And this is the menu that I've shown in one of the slides previously with, with all of the options of all the different applications. If you do serverless, you have trigger mesh. Uh, if you want to store containers, you have the Docker registry or Harbor, this is fantastic. You can install Google's default Kubernetes dashboard, if that's your thing as well. And of course, you can install WordPress. This is exactly what we want. So I'm going to click on WordPress right here. There we go. Uh, the application is uh, it's ready to be installed. There's a little bit of a text to explain you what it does. We, we all know what it does. And I'm going to install it with the default options. I'm not going to specify a password. It's going to generate the password for me automatically. So I don't need to do anything else. I actually don't have to do anything else at this point. I just click on launch, two clicks, one for WordPress, one for launch. That's everything that we need right here. So it's going to take a little bit of a while. Hopefully it works. No. Let's try again. WordPress launch. Ah, much better. There we go. For some reason, the first click didn't go through. But here I have my application running. Uh, excuse me, not yet running. It's starting up. So it's installed as a Helm chart, of course, basically 
with all of its dependencies. It consists of grosso modo two parts, uh, one part running the WordPress PHP application and the other one running MariaDB, which stores all of the data of my, my blog, of course, in real time. Uh, this also triggers the creation of a load balancer on Exascale. If I look now on Exascale and I look at load balancers, I see that I have a load balancer on 159, 100, 243, 72. And lo and behold, that's exactly the IP that I have right here. I will wait for a few more seconds so that the WordPress uh, pod is running. Uh, that means that the application will be ready to be used. Up until that point, of course, it won't make any sense that I click. So I will leave this running for a moment. Ah, there we go. It is ready. So let's cross our fingers. Let's click on this link and the site cannot yet be reached. That's okay. It can take a few seconds. And there we go. Your connection is not private. Of course, I haven't configured anything regarding um, certificates or anything. So of course, I'm using a self-signed certificate, but it's okay. I trust myself. I know that this is safe. So if I click on it, lo and behold, I can see WordPress. And of course, my user, Philip J. Fry, would like to log in immediately and start creating posts. Uh, however, uh, it turns out that is, it's not that obvious at first because what is the password? Um, the password, the username of this installation is user, but the password is, as I can see, it's a secret stored inside of kubectl. I don't want to use the command line. I really want to use my uh, Rancher installation, which is very handy. So I can click on the Cluster Explorer. I click on the Cluster Explorer and I jump into this interface that is really streamlined for one um, for one and one only one thing, which is to see all of the objects that you've defined inside of your cluster. And one of them, of course, are secrets. If I click on secrets, I can see that there's a WordPress password secret, and that looks suspiciously useful. Uh, we're going to click on it, and I can copy right away. And uh, if I click here, I can now enter my user, and I can paste my password. I can log in and there we have, we can actually use this WordPress installation. So as you can see, launched from the Ranger interface, configured by Ranger internally, and we can jump and create posts right away and be crazy. Let's just do a quick one. Hello, welcome. And publish, publish, view post. And here we have, the blog post. So this is fully working on real time. You can actually try this IP uh, and you can bypass the security message. It's okay. There's nothing uh, dangerous right there right now. So I'm going to go back to my cluster manager for a minute. There's one more thing that I would like to show to you, uh, which is I'm going to log out and I'm going to log again as the professor, as the as the administrator of this cluster. Do not ask me again for this one. Thank you. There we go. Uh, and now the EKS cluster is waiting. So it's actually happening. Things is no longer provisioning. We're in waiting state, which is really cool. We still don't have nodes, so we still have to wait. But if I go into Exascale now, I can see that there's a little bit more CPU and memory consumption. Things are happening up because my colleague, Philip J. Fry, has just created a new application, of course. And I can see that application here. I can see in the project, uh, I can see the project WordPress, and I can see everything that I need to see is exactly what I see before. But as an admin, I can do something much useful, much more useful with Ranger. I can go to the Cluster Explorer as the administrator, and I can go on the apps and marketplace section. And there's plenty of administrative apps ready to be installed on my uh, cluster as administrator, I can do that. So I click on monitoring, which is the one I'm interested. There is a warning about the number of CPUs, but don't worry, it actually works pretty fine uh, in spite of the warning. So I will install this more monitoring application. And this is basically going to take a little bit, a uh, little bit of time. And uh, what it, this is going to do is to install in one shot Grafana, Prometheus, and Alert Manager on my cluster. And then DevOps engineers can come and configure to 
create the, gra the Grafana dashboards that they prefer so that they can manage all the aspects of their clusters exactly as they want to. So this is great. We're going to leave this running for a moment. It's going to take a little bit of time. Let's go back to the cluster manager. Here I can see all of my clusters. EKS is still waiting. We, don't, we didn't have luck with this one, but it's okay. Uh, we can see here uh, in the Cluster Explorer for Exoscale. I can come here. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. I have a new entry on my uh, menu as administrator for my cluster called Monitoring. And if I click on Monitoring, there you go. You've got Alert Manager, Prometheus, Grafana. And they are unavailable for a moment because all of the pods and all of the infrastructure is starting up. It takes a little bit of a while, a couple of minutes. So don't worry about that. We're going to come back here a few minutes, but at least you see that things are happening. And this is the cool thing about it. Very good. Back to the slides, because basically uh, that's, uh, that's basically uh, the demo, what I wanted to show you today. So the key points to retain about what you've seen today are the following that Rancher is a really advanced open source, free as beer and free as, um, as, uh, free as freedom and free as beer uh, management tool for Kubernetes, which is fantastic. You can go to GitHub and see all the development. You can open up tickets and figure out how things work. It's really great. It supports all Kubernetes installations that are approved by the CNCF. And you've seen it here, it worked without a any problem with Minikube, Exoscale SKS, Amazon EKS, and so on. It supports the major cloud providers. Of course, Amazon, Azure, and Google Cloud, they make up for almost 90% of the whole worldwide market of cloud infrastructure as a service provider. So you clearly want to work with them. Rancher gets you a solution for that. You can install and uninstall Rancher very easily. This is something that I haven't mentioned, but actually you can remove Rancher if after trying it, you don't like it. It's okay. It doesn't leave any traces. And this is very interesting as well. You can try it without uh, having, you know, maybe considering whether it's a good idea or not. Just go on, get it up, get it running. It really is that cool. And if you are working on big enterprises with really secure environments and you need to comply with plenty of regulations. No worries, Rancher is used by lots of government organizations, very big businesses all over the world. You can install and deploy applications using Helm on the command line or on a click, uh, point and click interface, whichever you prefer. And of course you can monitor all of those applications in real time so that they are easy to use and you have a centralized location uh, where to do that. And this is also very handy and very useful. Very good. So that's what we have for you, what we have for you today. Uh, you can download right now the slides of this presentation. You can get them on bit.ly slash the rancher advantage. Right now you can go open your browser uh, and you can get a copy of these slides with clickable links. Of course it's fully clickable PDF uh, with all the notes everything that I've been reading as a cheat sheet in front of me, it's there. So you know all of the information, everything that I have to tell you is right here. And of course, at Vision, we are crazy about Rancher. We use it, we deploy it for our customers. We do plenty, plenty of things as well with K3S, with RKE, everything that Rancher does. So if you need any help, if you have doubts, if you need questions, a personalized demo, if you would like us to show you a bit more, get in touch with me. Uh, or with us, Adrian, my name is Adrian Kosmacheski. I'm developer relation and vision, and my email is adrian at vision.ch. Uh, get in touch with us. Thank you so much for watching this webinar. And hopefully the next time we meet for to talk about Rancher, it will be in person and there will be beers and maybe pizzas at the end. Right now, that's everything I have. Thank you so much, everyone. And now let's see if you have any questions. So I'm going to open the question. I'm going to leave this slide. I'm going to leave this slide so you